Hello, today we are with Assistant Professor Jacqueline Chua, Junior Principal Investigator, Ocular Imaging Group in SERI. I'm Dr. Lo from Singapore National Eye Centre. Today we're talking about Professor Chua's uh, uh, paper on multivariate normative comparison, a novel method for improved use of RNFL thickness to detect early glaucoma. Hi Jacqueline. I wanted to ask you first, what's your usual scope of uh, your research interests? Why are you interested in this topic in particular? Thank you for the invitation. So I've always been interested to improve how we detect glaucoma using the Optical Coherence Tomography, or OCT for short. So we know that glaucoma is a disease that affects a type of cell called the retinal ganglion cells, or the RGC. Now, loss of the exons of these RGCs can actually be non-invasively measured using the OCT-derived retinal nerve fibre layer thickness measurement. I see. And what, why do you think uh, it's important to maybe set out normative measurements for specific groups, like you know, in terms of ethnicity or people with uh, certain diseases? So how we use the OCT is we compare our patients' nerve fibre layer thickness measurement with a normative database. Now this is a reference database that's developed by the manufacturing company uh, using a few hundred individuals. So this sets out the reference range for the normal. Now the OCT actually provides only age-adjusted normative analysis to account for age-related loss of these ganglion cells. But um, so it doesn't really account for other factors. And we know other factors such as refractive error or our myopia level actually can affect how we use the retinal nerve fiber layer thickness to detect glaucoma. So it potentially can uh, have a high chance of overestimating glaucoma likelihood in patients with high myopia. I see. Overall, actually, would you say in terms of uh, finding out these novel methods of having no normative data, would this be overestimating or underestimating glaucoma rates or it really depends on the factors that you're looking at? It depends on the specific groups. And for high myopia, it, there's a risk of uh, overestimating when we compare it to the reference data, which is mostly made out of amotropic or very low prescription individuals. Okay. Well, let's talk about one of the examples you did uh, provide, uh, which is uh, a middle-aged patient who had high myopia. With the rising incidence of both myopia and high myopia um, in the world, but you know, especially East Asia where it's extremely prevalent. Do you see a significant impact of your research data in terms of managing such patients? Yes, that's right. So the proportion of myopia is very high in urban East Asian population, like our country Singapore. So this may really result in a high rate of false positive glaucoma referrals among these high myopes substantially increasing the demand of secondary glaucoma care in our hospital eye clinics. So by improving the OCT normative database, we can potentially provide a more accurate glaucoma referment, uh, re referral. Yeah, I think that that would be really uh, useful. And how did your team come together to you know, co conceptualize and manage this project? So I'm actually part of the ocular imaging group that's headed by Professor Leopold Schmetterer. So this project that I've undertaken is actually part of the NMRC or the MOH funded grant called Siena, which is the Singapore Imaging Eye Network. So we have a very well established framework from patient recruitment by our clinical research coordinators and then uh, followed by image quality assessment by our ophthalmic research technicians to image processing by the scientists. Okay, so it's quite a big group actually. Yes, it's, yeah. it's now made up of about 50 individuals. Wow, yeah. okay. And actually, you know, in terms of such a big project, what may be some of the difficult, uh, difficulties that you experience in terms of managing the whole project? Yeah, so one of the very significant challenges that I've encountered as, an, as a clinical optometrist is really learning the technical side of imaging. So terms like A-scan, projection artifacts, swept source, all these I really had to like, it was a steep learning curve for mm. me. So the group started in 2016 with just Professor Schmetterer and myself. So we had many one-to-one one -one meetings where I could basically ask about anything or discuss anything I was interested in. So I think it was really his patience and his in-depth knowledge that made the pro project very successful. Yeah. It's very important to have a good mentor in, in research and, and I can see that that really helped you know, the whole team kind of come together. But uh, with regards to this uh, uh, topic, 
what follow up or future research projects do you envision coming from such a interesting uh, you know uh, line of research so now that we have a model that actually outperforms that of a conventional normative OCT database for glaucoma detection, we plan to translate that into clinical care. Now I imagine that the compensation model will benefit our glaucoma suspect clinic the most. So individuals having outside normal limits, retinal nerve fiber layer thickness measurements when they use this commercial system, uh, this abnormal color code may change once we correct for their abnormal uh, factors mm. and these normal variants may then be deemed as normal and this could uh, potentially help to relieve the burden in the glaucoma clinics. Yeah, I, I definitely see a strong uh, clinical significance in your research and we hope to see more from you. Uh, thank you so much for participating in our interview today and uh, we'll uh, end the interview here and we'll hope to hear from you about other projects in the future. Thank you so much You're for welcome. the invitation. Yeah.